We have one big idea this month, and that is the key to solving counting problems is to count every possibility once and only once. All right, say it with me. How many times are we going to count each possibility? Once and only once. All right, let's go. We have to count the number of rectangles of any size in this grid. Now, we could just start off by going, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I got this one here, seven, and there's this one here is eight. And you can see the problem already, and this one's nine is, how do we know we've gotten them all? How do we know we've counted everything once? And if we keep going, after a while, we might start repeating ourselves. How do we know we've counted everything only once? So we have to be organized. We're going to break this into cases, nice, organized cases. And we're going to do that by looking at the kind of the number of rows and columns that are inside each rectangle. We're going to start with the easy rectangles, the little one by ones, the ones that just look like this. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice and easy. There are six of those. Then we're going to look up the ones that still take up only one row, but now they take up two columns. They look something like this. And you see there's one, two, three of those. All right, now we know there's not any one by three or one by four, or one by five. We're finished with the ones that take up only one row. Nice and orga organized. We know we're getting everything once and only once. So now we're going to look at the ones that take up two rows. First, we'll start them taking up two rows, one column. There's one here, two, three oh, down here, and another one down here. So we've got four of those. And of course, we go on to the two by twos. All right, we're taking up still two rows. Now we have two columns that look like this. The two by twos, well, we've got one right here and one right here. We've got two of those. And once again, we can't go off to three columns. We've only got two columns here. So now we've taken care of the ones that take up one row, the ones that take care of two rows, take up two rows, and then we're on to the ones that take up three rows. The three by ones, the ones that look like this. There's one here, there's one here. There's two of those. Then we move on to the three by two. That's the whole big rectangle. We know that there's only one that looks like this. See how nice and organized all our cases are, and we know that there aren't any more cases. We can't go to a larger number of rows, a larger number of columns. We know we've counted everything once and only once. So it's time to add them up. Six and four is 10. Three, two, two, and one, that's eight more. 10 and eight, 18. And we're ready for the next problem. All right, Whew. next problem has a lot of words. All right, we gotta read carefully. Eight blue and five orange tiles are arranged in an ordered line, such that the tile on the left must be blue. I'm going to underline that so we don't forget it. Always kind of underline those key things you might miss. Every tile must be, oh, here's another one, adjacent to at least one tile of the same color. So the first one, the first one's blue, because they say the first one has to be blue, then the next one has to be blue as well. All right, so we need to be adjacent to at least one tile of the same color. And then they give us an example here, an arrangement, four tiles. Uh, you could have four Bs in a row or two Bs and two Os, two blues and two oranges. Can't make anything else and still satisfy these two rules. And we want to figure out how many different arrangements are possible. And you know what the goal here is. We've got to count everything once and only once. All right. I have no idea where to start, so we're going to we're going to start off just by playing. That is the only very key strategy if you have no idea what to do, is just to do something. Get in there, mess around, maybe something will happen. I'm going to just list out one of these arrangements and see if I can learn anything by doing it. I've already got the first two tiles down here. I'm just going to keep going. I'll throw another blue one in there, and then let's say I throw in an orange. Well, once I throw in an orange, I have to throw in another orange, all right? Because I, I need to have, it needs to be next to, every single one must be adjacent to at least one of the same color. So I need to throw in another orange there. Maybe I go back to blue. I can't put just one. I need to put another blue. Well, let's say I go back to orange. Well, I know I need to throw in another orange. And now, wait a second. I need to throw in the last orange. Because if I put in a blue here, then that last orange is going to be all by itself. And we're not allowed to do that. So that means, well, my oranges, they either all five have to be together, or I have to put one group of two and one group of three. I can't split them up two, two, one, or one, 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 two. Can't do anything like that. I can't have any ones. They can only be all five together, or you can split them two and three. Or three and two. 
let's go ahead and finish this out. This one would look like this. I have to use all the blue tiles there at the end. And now I have a strategy for how to organize this. I can organize my counting by thinking about these, these orange tiles. They either all have to be together, one group of five, or they're going to split two and three. So let's, let's look at that. We're going to first look at the ones where all the oranges are together. Now I know I have to start with the group of blue. And then all my oranges are going to come together. So this is a block of blue and then a block of orange. And then, well, I might have another block of blue after that. So there might be another block out here. May or may not have that one. So let's, let's count up the number of ways I can do that. I can put all, all eight blues and then all five oranges. Now, if I put seven blues and then five oranges, well, then I only have one blue left. I can't do that. can't leave the blue all alone. So I can't go seven and five and one. can't do that. But I can go six, then five, and then a little group of two out there at the end. And then, of course, I can go five, five, three, four, five, and four, three, five, and five, two, five, and six. You see, we're nice and organized. And now, now I'm stuck. I can't start with just one because I can't have a blue alone. And I can't start with the oranges because I have to remember this left must be blue. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six possibilities that are organized like this, the five oranges all together. So now let's go over here and look at, we've got a block of blue, block of orange. Again, we have to start with the blues, then another block of blue, and then our second block of orange. And then we might have a block of blue at the end. All right, so these are going to be splitting two and three. But they could also split three and two. So I go two in the first group, three in the second, or just switch them around, three and two. So when I count all of these up, I'm going to have to remember to multiply by two at the end to switch. This could be two, this could be three, this could be three, this could be two. I'm just going to count the ones with two and then just double them at the end rather than listing everything twice. And we'll start the same way we did here. We'll try to put as many blues up front as we can. If I put eight blues up front, I won't have any left to put the, between the two groups of orange. Can't do that. Can't put seven here because then I'll only have one left over for over there. Can't leave them alone. But I can put six here. And then go two. And then two are left for this group because we have to split up the two orange groups. Six, two, two, three. Uh, let's try this with five. I go with five here, two. Well, now I've got three blues left. I can't split them two and one because I can't leave a blue all alone. So I have to put the remaining three all together right there. All right, well, now we're on to, what if I put four first? If I put four and then two, well, now I have four blues remaining. Well, I can put them all together. Or I can split them up two and two. All right, now you see where we're going. Nice and organized here. We're making sure we're counting everything once and only once. Taking care of the fours now. Well, now we go down to three. Now if I have three, I have five left over over here. I can put them all together. Or I can split them up. I can't split them up four and one. Can't leave one all alone. But I can split them up three and two. And I can split them up two, and three. And again, look at how nice and organized all of our casework is here. We're starting from the most number of blues we can put at the beginning. And then within each group, like within the threes, we're looking at the most number of blues we can put in the second column. Now we're down to the twos. Now I have six left over for the next column. I can put six here. I can put five. Nope, can't put five because then I'll only have one left, so we can't do five. But I can put four. I can put three. And then, of course, I can put two. All right, so these are all the possibilities with two orange and then three orange. And then all the possibilities with three orange and two orange will be basically the same as these. I just flip these two columns. So we count these up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we double it. So we flip the oranges, and we have 22 in this case. And we just add these two up. 22 here, 6 there, 28. And we're sure we've counted everything once and only once.
Now, you got that key idea there? I'm going to leave you with a little homework. I'm going to go back to this problem and talk about this problem a little bit more. What would you do if we dropped in a bunch more lines here? And then ask you the same question, how many rectangles? Now, if you're going to go after it like this, you might be here all day. You're going to have a lot of cases. You'll get there eventually. But is there a slicker way to tackle this problem? All right, see if you can figure that out.